What's a histogram and how do we use it in photography? This video is going to show you exactly what a histogram is, how to read it, and how it can improve your photography skills. Let's get straight to it. Okay, so let's talk about the histogram and you can read more on the videoschoolonline.com blog because I have a how to read a histogram tutorial, which is awesome. But basically, what is it? It's a graph that visually represents how bright or dark your photo is. And so it goes from dark to bright. On the left is pure black, on the right is pure white. Let me get a bigger screen so you can see. So on the left will be pure black, on the right will be pure white. And in the middle are your midtones, so your grays and your neutral colors and tones that aren't too bright and aren't too dark. And every pixel of your image is represented in this graph. And so if there's lots of darkness in your photo, if lots of your frame is black or dark, and that means lots of pixels are dark, this dark area of the histogram is going to be really high. If there's lots of whites or overexposed parts of your image, there's going to be a peak over on the right side. And so you can see in this histogram, without even seeing the photo, we can tell that it's very contrasty, meaning that there's lots of darks and lots of bright colors and not so many mid-tones. And so this peak on the left side is darks and the peak on the right side is highlights. But this is actually a well exposed image because if we saw this hill touching the left side of this graph, that means that it's crunched. That means the blacks are too dark and it's just completely black. There's no information that your camera is reading and vice versa. If this peak on the right was touching the right side, that's pure white. And that means there's too many overexposed pixels in your photo. And that basically means that there's no information in that overexposed area. So it's just completely white. And typically that's not good. So here let's look at three different views of a histogram, three different pictures that are normal and overexposed and underexposed. And this is from picturepower.com. So this normal histogram reading shows that there's this hill in the middle, lots of midtones, but nothing completely overblown or nothing completely black. That is, there's not too many things that are overexposed or underexposed like these images below. So the overexposed, you see this giant hill, this giant peak on the right that's touching the right side. That means there's lots of pure white pixels in your image and that's overexposed, not good. Underexposed, there's lots of pixels on the left side and not so many in the middle or on the right. A well-balanced and well-exposed photo will have pixels across the entire spectrum, like this top one. So some touching the right, some touching the left, but then a majority in the middle. And of course, this has to do with your artistry as well. Maybe you want a silhouette so that you want, so you want lots of darks on the left, or maybe you want things overexposed. The histogram just allows you to see visually what is being exposed and how it's being exposed. Now let's look into actually how you read this on the camera while you're taking photos. Okay, so let's look at my Canon 7D to actually show you how the histogram works and how you can use it while taking photos and also to review photos. So typically on a camera, when you want to see the histogram when you are taking a photo, you have to open up the live view mode on the back of your screen so that you can see what your lens is seeing through this screen. So just hit the start stop button on the Canon 7D. If you're using a Nikon or a different version, just hit that live preview button. Now this doesn't work if we are in the video mode of the Canon 7D. So you have to make sure that you're in the photo mode, but still in this live preview mode. Once you're there, you hit this info button until the histogram pops up. And as you can see here, the histogram is showing a pretty well lit and properly exposed image of this curtain, the top of this chair. I'm looking out a window in my bedroom. But if I change the exposure, say I go down and I start it out like something like this, you can see this peak on the right side. And that's all this light that's coming through the window that is overexposed. Now if I go down, if I change the f-stop, raise the f-stop, shrinking the aperture, so less light is coming through the lens, 
I have all this black, so I'm exposing to the outside world, so the outside is semi-properly exposed, but it's creating this silhouette, and that's where this dramatic peak is showing on the histogram. Now remember, you're the artist, you're the photographer, so maybe you want this, and when you are taking silhouettes, it's good to use the histogram so that you can know, is this completely black? Do I want it to be completely black? Do I want it to be a silhouette? Yes, so I want to stop down so it's completely black. But do I want it properly exposed? Well, maybe I do. So I'm going to drop the f-stop a little bit, opening up the aperture, letting more light in. So then I have that typical exposure of a properly exposed histogram reading. So it's pretty even. There's no dramatic peaks. And this is well exposed. But remember, you're the artist. You get to choose what you want. Now once you've taken a photo, you can also review your photo using the histogram. So you hit the photo review button, and then you hit this info button a couple of times until this histogram is brought up. And so as you go through these photos, you can see the histogram from each of them. So say this one, you see this dramatic peak on the right, the very right edge, that is this overexposed sky that is showing up, and that's completely white, and that's going to be uneditable. What I should have done when I was taking this photo, I should have underexposed a little bit and so that the sky was still, it wasn't this dramatic peak on the right, it was just a little hill on the right and it was exposed. Even though that, that would mean that these buildings would be a little bit darker, it wouldn't have meant that I couldn't edit them and make them brighter in post. Let's go through a couple more. You can see a lot of these, it has this nice sort of hill of a properly exposed image that you can see on the histogram. So all these are very well well shot. Of course, depending on what you want, maybe you want dramatic lighting. So this was an absolute error. This was just me taking a photo without looking at my settings. And you can see completely overexposed and on the right side of the histogram, you have this highlights peak going up the right side of this histogram. So this is how you use the histogram when reviewing your photos and it's a nice way when you're out looking at photos taking photos you can see what was properly exposed sometimes you don't want to be using the histogram while you shoot live because you want to be looking through the through the eye viewer rather than the live view mode and so you want to look at the histogram after the fact so remember to view the histogram when taking a photo make sure you are in the live mode of viewing so this back screen is showing what is your lens is looking at and click that info button until you see the histogram when you are reviewing again just hit that info button until you see the histogram so that's what a histogram is and i hope that you've learned a lot and that you're now able to use it when you're out taking photos and i hope that it ultimately just helps you take better photos because that's what these lessons are all about to help you take better photos. So go out, practice using your histogram. If you have any questions, please let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey YouTube, you like that video? Well, please subscribe to the channel for more. Check out our website for articles, webinars, books, and more. And of course, check out our online course library, ranging on topics from video making, motion graphics, photography, starting a business, freelancing, to beer brewing, resume writing, adopting a cat, and much more.